Welcome to Suburban On Air. It's an absolute pleasure to have Sylvan Adams with me as a guest. Uh, now, it's funny because without COVID, Sylvan and I had planned to meet uh, last year. Uh, your trip was, uh, was actually uh, didn't work out, so we couldn't connect. Then it was going to be this year, then it was COVID. And now you're actually physically in Montreal as we do this Zoom interview. Why are you here, Sylvan? Well, it certainly makes it more convenient uh, with the time zones uh, that, that we can pick an, an hour, a mutually agreeable hour. Um, so cool. I was, we came, we arrived in Montreal, uh, actually for my father's birthday. Uh, on August the 2nd, my father reached the ripe age of 100, a milestone age. And uh, so we, we, um, we had always planned to come uh, to, to do a, a party for him. Obviously, with COVID, uh, the party was a little bit smaller than, than, than we had originally planned, but it was warm and, uh, and sweet nonetheless, and um, we got to celebrate my father's uh, 100th. Your dad is a remarkable man. He came here with basically the shirt on his back and built uh, an outstanding business. Can you just tell me a little bit about who your dad is and what he did and the legacy that he left for you and your, your family? So, um, both of my parents were Holocaust survivors. Um, uh, my father was in, was, was in slave labor in Romania. Both of, both of them uh, were uh, uh, in Romania during the war. Um, and they actually met in Canada, uh, to, uh, introduced by, by uh, uh, members of the Romanian Jewish community in, in, in Montreal. But, uh, so my father was in slave labor uh, in, in, in uh, Bucharest. And as he put it, um, it was very, very tough. And uh, he said, they forgot to feed us. And he said, you know, we were literally sifting through garbage to, uh, to, to, to have enough to eat, to have enough calories while, while they were put into this intense labor. And he didn't like it very much. So he, um, he managed to get himself some false IDs and he had the, he, he had several uh, different uh, identification papers and he had them each in, in, in a different pocket. So depending on who stopped him in the street, uh, he would pull out the, the right one. So he, 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 he went AWOL on his uh, slave uh, labor camp and uh, eventually took, uh, made his way to Constanza the, uh, on the Black Sea, Constanza, the port of Constanza, took a ship to Turkey, a train eventually through uh, Syria and to Palestine and, uh, and arrived in 1944, arrived in, in, um, in Palestine, um, British mandatory Palestine and, um, and was there, uh, when the state was declared, he was actually in the, in the, uh, he, he was recruited to be in the military and, and fought in the war of independence for Israel. Um, and, um, and so, yes, so he, so he, and then he, then later on after the war, he became a, um, what, an emissary, what's called a shaliach. Um, and they sent him because in Romania, the second language was French. Um, they sent him to, um, uh, North Africa and to Marseille, France to, um, basically do orientation sessions for the uh, Jews that were being expelled from those North African countries, Tunisia, Algeria, and, um, and Morocco, and to prepare them for their, for their emigration to Israel. And that's what my father did for a while. And eventually he and, a, and another friend of his, they decided, um, why don't we, why don't we uh, cross the ocean? They jumped on a boat and, and went to Canada. And that's where he met my mother. Uh, my mother had a, a, an, an interesting, a similar, uh, well, a, a, an interesting path. Um, she was in hiding during the war uh, in Bucharest. And, um, and after the war, uh, in 1947, they jumped on a boat and made their way to Palestine. And um, the British turned the boat away. This is the story of, the, uh, of Leon Uris's book, Exodus, um, and the movie with Paul Newman. Uh, basically, uh, they were sent... Um, to an internment camp in Cyprus where she spent six months until the state of Israel was declared and uh, they were able to, 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 to continue to, uh, to Israel. And my mother did her high school in, in, uh, in, in Tel Aviv. And uh, eventually she, her, her, she was an only child and my grandfather found the weather uh, too hot in the summertime and they jumped on a boat and, and ended, up, ended up in Canada. And so as I said, my parents met in Canada 
and um, and they came to French Canada, of course, because as I said, um, they, they were already fluent in, in uh, French. And how did he, does the business that he started, that is, you know, the business that your family is now running is huge, successful. How, how did he start it and it grew into such an empire? So my father's, my, my grandfather, my father's father's business in the old country was tanning, leather, leather, leather and tanning. And this is what my father knew. So when he came to Canada, um, he uh, found a job working for a, a, a Jewish employer in Quebec City. And, uh, and because he was an expert in that field, he had, he had worked with his own father. And um, there, there was a small Jewish community in, in Quebec City. And that, that's, where, that's where I grew up, by the way. Uh, and, um, and he met some business people, lawyers and, and the like. And uh, somehow they roped him in to, um, to do a... Um, a real estate project because he had made a few bucks and he was, he was a very, very valuable employee and he was actually being paid a, quite a, quite a handsome sum of money back in the day. He told me his, his wage was $20,000 um, back in 1951, 51, 52. And, you know, in those days, uh, $20,000 would be like, you know, earning a seven figure uh, salary today. So he had some money and, so uh, somebody sold him a deal to build some uh, a duplex um, and put him together with a, with a notary and a and a, um, a, a and a builder and all, and a whole package and somebody sold him a package and he says my luck was that the whole thing actually worked and and I didn't go bankrupt on the first deal so <laughs> one deal led to another to another to another to another and um, at some point my father thought back back in his youth. He says, you know what, if I do this and I flip a few more properties, I'll be able to retire. <laughs> and this is, you know, we're talking back in the 1950s. So yeah. um, from residential, my father ended up branching out into to office buildings. He, he ended up buying a, 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 res, a, a residential property that he converted into offices. And from offices, he became one of the pioneers um, in the world, really, in, in, in uh, shopping center development. He was the first... Um, shopping center he built the first shopping center in quebec city and he was right there in in in, in the late 50s um as one of the first shopping center developers and that's that's you know that's how he really made his mark in the in the end it, it's a great story now of course you were involved in the business but uh, five years ago or so you decided to make aliyah and move to israel uh, why did you decide that and how's it been going so um I met my wife in Israel um, uh, what, uh, uh, 37 years ago. Um, we were both youngsters volunteering on a kibbutz. My wife is uh, British born. And, um, and I, I guess I was struck by lightning because uh, <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were together on the kibbutz for about four and a half months. And uh, we were married shortly thereafter. And we've, we've been married now 36 years. So I came home on a, a cold, and so we are Zionists. I grew up in a very Zionistic household. Um, Israel is the homeland of our people, and there is no way to express one's Zionism better than with your feet. Um, so I came home on a cold, dark, uh, wintry uh, Montreal night, and I said to uh, my wife, Margaret, what do you think about moving to Israel? And she said, she said two things. I always thought we would end up there and, and it'll be an adventure. And uh, she was right on both counts and uh, we're, we're really loving our lives in Israel. And, and it's great that, uh, you know, I keep getting press releases about what you're doing in Israel and uh, you, you, you're involved with uh, cycling, you're involved with uh, auto racing now. And of course, you just had the Sylvan Adams Children's Hospital last week. So these are just some of the projects. Uh, they, they're calling you uh, an ambassador. I, you know, you're really getting a good reputation. So you're, you're really getting involved now in Israel with doing certain projects. So when we moved, I decided, um, you know, I was going to devote the next chapter of my life to promoting my new country. Um, and um, so I had business cards printed uh, with a new title, which reads self-appointed ambassador at large for Israel. That's and where it I'm self Right. So I'm self-appointed, meaning I cannot be reassigned or fired. 
uh, and uh, and I, my job is really promoting the country. And what I've done is uh, I've done a, a, a whole number of projects which um, which expose you know that the, 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 the Israel is a misunderstood country. Um, there is a, a steady uh, flow of of uh, news stories coming uh, from Israel which don't reflect the normal Israel that I, that I live and experience as a citizen every single day. So Israel is a diverse, tolerant, um, uh, uh, pluralistic, fiercely democratic, and most importantly, I would say, safe country. And most people wouldn't realize that from the news stories that come out, which, you know, are focused uh, uh, almost unidimensionally on, on the, the conflict. Uh, people don't realize that Israel has a 20% Arab minority. Um, uh, there are Israeli Arab doctors and nurses in the hospital. When you get treated in the hospital, they don't ask you what your nationality is. You don't care what their nationality is. Uh, there are Israeli Arab policemen. There are Israeli Arab, believe it or not, uh, uh, ambassadors to foreign countries, Israeli ambassadors to foreign countries who are Arab. And of course, there are members of parliament, members of the Knesset, um, and they re and it's a proportional representation system. So there are about, about 20% of the uh, Knesset members are also Israeli Arab. So this is part of what people don't understand, that Israel is a really, is a, is a, is a democratic country that uh, respects minority rights and um, so I wanted to show Israel to what I call the silent majority. So my experience with first time visitors to Israel is they are almost universally surprised that what I just described to you is the reality of Israel rather than what they've expected uh, prior to coming. So by showing Israel to the world, to, to very large audiences, and I'm talking hundreds and hundreds of millions of people, and I can give you some examples of my, the projects that I've done, um, I'm basically reaching those people they, they are first time visitors to Israel via their TV screens and seeing a different side, uh, what I call the, the I, I guess the, the normal Israel that, um, that we have to strive and fight to be seen as a normal country, a normal Western um, pluralistic de democratic country. So um, this is what, this is what I'm doing. And at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm also involved, as you mentioned, uh, the Children's Hospital. Well, I, I support three different hospitals uh, in Israel with big projects. I support uh, two different universities. Uh, I'm the vice chairman of, of uh, Tel Aviv University. And, uh, and so in addition to doing these big projects that show Israel abroad, um, I'm also you know, trying to strengthen uh, the, the infrastructure uh, of Israel and, uh, and, and have become involved in, in, in a number of different projects. You don't have to convince me that your card is very, very legit. I can tell you, I can tell you that, that and more so. Uh, now, I'm thinking you're going to have to come back to Montreal one day for a ceremony for the mayor to rename Westbury uh, Sylvan Adams uh, Avenue. <laughs> because when you walk, you go down uh, there, you've left quite a legacy. Even though you are living in Israel, you really left a legacy. Uh, YMYWHA, Herzliya, Sancho Communitaire Juif, Yalde. Um, why was that important for you to do so look, I grew up in Montreal. I grew up in in, in Quebec, in, in the province of Quebec, and um, uh, and my father dearly loves uh, Canada and Quebec, and um, and this was a kind of a uh, I guess a going away gift that my gift to Montreal and uh, specifically to the Montreal Jewish community. But um, so. Um, so, 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 so that a token of, well, a token, a, a, a big, a big gift, uh, to show my appreciation, uh, for Montreal and, um, and, 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 uh, you know, because we were leaving, but our, a little piece of our hearts remained here. And it must make you feel good when you come back to Montreal, you drive down Westbury and you see that you've done that because you've done such great, I mean, I know all the different organizations, how much they appreciate what you've done for them. So uh, you, you, you will, I mean, everyone loves to leave a legacy. And so Montreal is, is, is a town that's dear to you. And you've left, left some very, very important, two important parts of our community. You know, I'm, I'm following in my father's footsteps. Um, my, my parents um, 
we're always char- char- charitable. And this is, you know, I learned that uh, from a young age. And even when they didn't have great means at the beginning, they gave according to their means. And as, as uh, my father's business um, uh, became more successful, he, he gave more and more and more. And uh, I've had the good fortune of, of having qu- quite a bit of success. And um, again, I, this is what I grew up with. This is what I, what I believe is, is important. Um, and uh, I'm, the, I'm, I'm the only Israeli signatory to the Giving Pledge. Do you know what the Giving Pledge is? Uh, oh, Bill, not familiar with that. So Bill Gates and Warren Buffett uh, formed this um, uh, group, I guess you, you would call it. We're, we number about 230 in the world of uh, high net worth people who have agreed to give away at least half of their wealth. And I signed the pledge. So all of these gifts that I'm giving um, are a natural uh, um, uh, follow-up to, 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 uh, to, to, to having made this pledge to give away, uh, uh, as I said, at least, half, at least half of my net worth. And, um, and, uh, and, and again, I try to make this little planet a little bit better. Well, you've definitely done it. I want to thank you very much for your time. Stay in touch and stay safe. My pleasure. Uh, Good luck. Good luck uh, getting to the end of this COVID. And uh, I look forward to meeting you uh, in person like like we had originally planned. You got it. All right.